So, this course is about as I uh, mentioned earlier active circuits that means essentially amplifiers. Okay. Now, from your basic electrical circuits course you would have been familiar with the basic elements R, L and C. Okay. Now, what kind of elements are these? When there can be passive. Okay. What does it mean? Won't? They only consume power. Okay. Now, given an element, how do you uh, decide whether it is active or passive? Okay. For a two terminal element where you have a single voltage and a single current, you can do this, right. For instance, for a resistor, you have V and I, the relationship between V and I is what? What is the relationship? Straight line? Straight line passing through the origin. Okay. okay, this didn't quite pass through the origin, but and what's the slope? One by R. When you plot current versus voltage, so clearly this is only in the first and third quadrants, and it is a passive element. Okay, and do you know any examples of an element which is not passive? Battery voltage source. Okay. So, a battery is a real element and how do you represent a battery? So, we have a battery, but uh, we have ideal elements that we use for circuit analysis. right? So, what is the ideal element that is closest to the battery? Voltage source. Okay. So, this is equivalent to voltage source, but it is not quite that actually it also has some resistance in series. So, that if you do load a battery, its voltage drops a little. Okay. So, let us not worry about the real battery, but consider a voltage source. What is the characteristic of a voltage source on the same I V plane? Constant? Which way is it a constant? I mean how what will the curve look like on this plane? Vertical line. Okay. Oops. This. So, is it active or passive? Active. Why? It is always active. So, actually I mean you can have a voltage source dissipating power, if you push a current into it, it will dissipate power. So, depending on if the operating point is here in this quadrant, it is passive and here it is active. Okay. And similarly for a current source, ideal current source, it will be a constant that is a horizontal line and again if it is in the second quadrant, it is active, if it is in the first quadrant, it is passive and so on. Now, what about L and C? Are they active or passive? Active or passive? Passive, but they do not dissipate any energy, they do not generate anything either. So, they are passive. Now, this is okay, this definition is fine <coughs> for a two terminal element where you just have a single current and a voltage, you can draw these pictures and decide if they are active or passive, but in general if you had let us say an n terminal element, how will you tell if it is passive or active? Hmm? Hmm. 
Yeah, that is possible. That is, you apply. I mean, you although you have n terminals, you think of it as pairs of uh, terminals. You apply a power source to one pair and see if uh, more power comes out of some other pair. Okay. But I mean, let's say a more uh, compact mathematical description. First of all, if you have n uh, terminals, how many independent currents can you define? I mean, you have currents through every terminal, right? How many of them will be independent? N minus one. Why? What happens to the remaining one? It will be just the inverse sum of all the currents, right? So we have. And this, which is I n, okay. This is just from Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, so if you treat the entire box as a closed surface, there can't be any charge accumulation here. So that means that whatever is going in has to be coming out. And how many independent voltages can you define? N minus one also. Okay. So, voltages are first of all always defined as difference in potential between two nodes. Okay. Now, you can take any pairs of nodes, you will always come up with n minus 1 independent ones. One convenient definition is to use this bottom line here, the nth node, as the common reference for everything. So, the voltage of first terminal with respect to this is V1, with respect to this is V2, and then uh, the n minus 1 terminal is Vn minus 1 and so on. Okay. Now, given these n minus 1 terminal voltage definitions with respect to the common uh, terminal and also these n minus 1 independent currents, can you give a definition of uh, passive versus active? Exactly. So, for a resistor by itself, if you look at uh, V r and I r and it has to be always taken with this. What is the sign convention called? I mean, I, I define a voltage with this being positive, the upper terminal and I have the current going into the terminal. This is how we always use, uh, this is how we always define, right. You can always, you can also use the other way around, it will be confusing, but we always use this convention and this is known as the passive sign convention. And with this definition, obviously, V r times I r will always be more than 0, because it will always be dissipating power. Now, exactly the same a similar de definition exists for a multi terminal element and that is that summation of V i products k going from 1 to n minus 1 over all the terminals should be greater than 0. Okay. So, that is by the way this means it is passive actually greater than or equal to if it is less that means that this element is generating power and it is active. Okay. So, so far uh, these basic elements R, L and C are uh, passive elements. In case of L and C what can happen is they can store energy, but let us say then you have to be a little more careful with the definition. So, you start with an inductor with 0 initial condition that is no initial current or you start with a capacitor with uh, uh, zero initial condition, zero initial voltage. Okay, then you apply whatever V or I you want. What happens is the integral of V I will be more than zero. That is, some energy will go into it, but you can't have net energy coming out starting from a discharged capacitor or a discharged inductor. Okay, now if you charge a capacitor, you can take energy out of it because it stores energy. You can take that much energy out of it, but if you start with something that is discharged, you can't get energy. So they are also passive. Okay. Now, it turns out that to make a lot of the interesting circuits such as amplifiers and uh, digital circuits and so on, we need active elements. Okay. Now, there is no such thing as a truly active element other than a battery which stores energy in the form of some chemical uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, there is no truly uh, active element, but it turns out that in some operating ranges, some elements can be termed as being active. Okay. So, in all the basic elements that you have discussed, not just this, you would have seen other kinds of elements, right? What other elements have you seen? Huh? No, I mean I am talking about basic circuit elements, dependent sources. 
Okay. So, we have this passive elements or two terminal basic elements R L and C and also mutual inductor which is also a passive and you have the idealized sources voltage and current sources which can be active or passive depending on the region of operation and you also have uh, dependent sources okay, or control sources. So, now depending on what is the controlling quantity and the control quantity, how many types of control sources are there? 4, right. So, you can have voltage as the controlling quantity and voltage as the control quantity. This is known as a voltage control voltage source okay. and it is denoted by this symbol. So, let us say elsewhere in the circuit there is some V. This control source what it says is the voltage across these two terminals will be some A which is a property of the control source times V. Okay. So, it always follows that. Similarly, you can have a voltage controlled current source V C C S for short. So, that means that there is some voltage between two terminals somewhere in the circuit and the control source element which is defined between the terminals A and B has a current which is some g m times v. I use the letter g why so that whatever uh, constant you have there it has to have dimensions of conductance right because it is giving you a current uh, when it is multiplied by a voltage. So, this is known as transconductance. Conductance refers to the conductance of a resistor. A resistor has two terminals. You apply a voltage across those two terminals and you have a current flowing through the same two terminals okay, between the same two terminals that is a conductance. Here the voltage is applied between these two terminals whereas, current is flowing elsewhere. So, that is a transfer conductance or transconductance. Okay. Similarly, we can have a current controlled voltage source C C V S. So, how does this work? You have a current in some wire in some branch in the circuit and the voltage between terminals A and B happens to be some R m times i. The same reason why I use R m because this quantity now has dimensions of resistance and it is known as trans resistance. By the way, whenever you think of any quantities, think of it with the units or with appropriate dimensions. Okay. Do not say resistance is 1, it is either 1 ohm or 1 kilo ohm or 1 milli ohm or whatever it is. And similarly, you can have the last one which is a current controlled current source. These are just definitions which you know I am just brushing them up. So, you have a current somewhere and the element current controlled current source forces a current A times i from B to A. Okay. And of course, this is the voltage gain it is a dimensionless quantity it multiplies a voltage to give you a voltage and this is the current gain also a dimensionless quantity. Okay. Now, it is these control sources that are most interesting to make uh, active circuits right because it is using the control using control sources or somehow making some elements behave as control sources that we have uh, all the interesting amplifiers and logic circuits and what not. Okay. Now, are these control sources active or passive? Hmm? I mean usually 
when this question is asked what is meant is if it is guaranteed to be passive okay a resistor is guaranteed to be passive so you will say it is passive a voltage source it's not depending on the region of operation it is active so then you just say it's active you know that even a voltage source can be forced into a passive mode by uh, pushing a current in the appropriate direction okay so by that definition are they active or passive active okay because you can imagine scenarios where let's say voltage in this polarity is positive and a current is flowing in that direction okay so that means that it is active it is delivering power okay so these are active elements now uh, how do we make these active elements in uh, basic circuits you would have used this you would have analyzed uh, circuits using these okay they are just symbols they are just some mathematical definitions but how would we go about making these things any guesses i mean transistor yeah so we have i mean if you i mean people refer to the transistor as usually an active element of course a transistor doesn't have any source of energy inside okay what it means is in some region of operation it can behave like an active element under some fine print okay now unfortunately the way this course is structured we will not go into the transistor at all so we will not have an understanding of how a transistor behaves like an active element if you are interested in that you have to take the analog circuits course but still to be able to discuss any interesting circuits you have to uh, understand these uh, uh, active elements and uh, see how they behave and so on at least in an abstract way okay so that's what we will do we will i will describe what will happen or what typically happens if you make uh, these active sources using transistors and then see that it's not quite desirable the way they are and we have to control them in some way okay now before going to that i think all of you at least at a high level know how to make a resistor how would you make it how do you make a resistor so any actually I, although we say conductors you take any conductor it's act, it has some resistance and then in principle you take uh, something with an appropriate cross sectional area and an appropriate length you will have a resistance of given value how about inductor i just wind up some wire and you will get an inductor and a capacitor yeah you just have two metal plates separated from each other and you will have capacitance now of course there are lots of engineering details like if you want a large amount of capacitance in a small area there are some things to do but at least you know how to do it but with control sources really have absolutely no idea right we have no idea how to do that now again like i said because we are not going into transistors we can't discuss that but do you know what a transistor is made of ha huh? yeah some semiconductor okay the control sources are made using transistors there are a number of types of transistors which will not make any sense at this point which are denoted by various symbols if you look at uh, any circuit diagram you may see some of these things okay but the common feature of all of them is that they are all made using semiconductors long long ago there used to be something known as vacuum tubes i don't think you would have even seen a vacuum tube radio unless you have some grandfather with some antique properties and so on so a huge radio which is this size and then in close when you turn it on i mean there will be some tubes that glow inside but by and large for the last half century at least everything has been made with semiconductors now one of the important features or essential features of semiconductors which will motivate us to do what will follow is that they have very high temperature sensitivity okay now you can make a resistor it will change with temperature but it's not a it need not be an order of magnitude change okay or it won't be an order of magnitude change rather okay similarly for inductors and so on an inductor depends largely on the geometry okay so as you change the temperature some dimensions may change very slightly and then the inductance may change but it's not going to be substantial same for capacitors but whereas the semiconductor characteristics 
because I mean it is a semiconductor meaning uh, it is something that does not conduct very well, but under the presence of something I mean somebody mentioned the word doping. So, maybe with doping they conduct, but these uh, phenomena are also highly sensitive to temperature. Okay. So, the conductivity and so on can substantially change with temperature. So, they are very highly temperature sensitive. So, we make these control sources, but the point is that these proportionality constants A, G M, R M and the current gain. Now, first of all it turns out we cannot make all of these uh, types of sources using transistors directly. Okay. Typically, most of the transistors what they give you is a control source of this type a voltage controlled current source, but the point is because of very high temperature sensitivity of the semiconductors these constants are also very highly temperature sensitive. Okay. Otherwise, our job would be quite easy. So, let us say I want an amplifier or I want a voltage controlled current source with a gain of uh, with a proportionality constant of 1 milli siemens. Now, again at this point you do not know what it depends on, but you can kind of guess that it probably depends on some dimensions of a transistor or some other parameters and you would adjust the dimensions and that is it you have 1 milli siemens control current source. Now, it does not work like that it turns out that as you change the temperature it can go anywhere from 1 milli siemens to maybe 3 milli siemens or sometimes even higher okay. the variation can be over many factors and sometimes even an order of magnitude. Okay. And it also turns out because of the same reason if you make like uh, hundreds of different transistors they will all have different constants. Okay. Now, of course, it is not great, but it is not it is what make makes our life interesting and gives us a job. So, our job is let us say you want to make an amplifier of gain 10 in spite of having these semiconductor devices whose uh, proportionality constant varies all over the place we would like to make an accurate gain of 10. Okay. So, that is the problem we will first tackle. Right now, we do not know how a transistor works, but you can take it from me and you can also read in books that the semiconductors are highly temperature sensitive. So, any control source that you make using semiconductors will also be highly temperature sensitive. Okay. So, uh, with this somehow we have to make well defined factors. So, let us say uh, what is an amplifier after all. Okay. So, for instance, my voice is being converted to electricity through this mic and then it goes somewhere. And then finally, it appears as a much bigger amplitude through loudspeaker, which is why you are able to hear it much louder than if I did not have the microphone and the loudspeaker arrangement, right. It is amplifying it. So, that means that it is making the voltage bigger by some amount, it is making the current bigger by some amount and so on. Okay. So, you have to have amplification. Amplification is key to everything and we would also like it to be well controlled. You do not want the factor of amplification the gain to vary all over the place. So, our initial problem is to make an accurate gain using elements whose gain is inherently inaccurate. Okay. It can vary all over the place. right? So, meaning you will use these control sources inside otherwise the whole uh, uh, exercise looks kind of stupid. right? I mean I say that I want to make an accurate current source I already drew all these current sources what is there to do. right? I just write 1 milli siemens next to it and that is it I am done okay. and I write 10 next to this and then hey, the gain is 10, but it does not work like that. If you use a transistor to make this control source its gain does vary all over the place. Okay. So, we have to have some elaborate arrangement of these uh, sort of basic control sources and maybe some other components to come up with accurate uh, control sources. Okay. So, we make control sources using these control sources, but what we make will be more accurate than what we started off with. Is this clear? Now, because we are not dealing with transistors, we have to settle for this level of abstraction of control sources. But uh, the message I want you to take home is that you can make uh, control sources using transistors, and typically with the present technology, the way the transistors are, they will be voltage controlled current sources. Okay. Now, what we'll do is uh, what we'll have is a more general discussion we can make any kind of control source using any kind of basic control sources, but of course, when you are using transistors it will be voltage control current sources that we will have. Okay. So, using that we will make accurate current sources uh, sorry accurate control sources of any factor that means that the factor is not very sensitive to temperature uh, it does not vary as much as the internal control sources varies. Okay.
any question so far and it is using these control sources that you can make like a more elaborate circuits ok. They have a large parameter spread that means that you make a number of devices they can all be quite different from each other ok. Whereas, if you make a loop of wire of a certain dimension it will have the same inductance I mean it is just dependent on the geometry right. So, our initial exercise is to realize So, this is what we want to do. Now, before we go further, the one particular aspect of uh, control sources I want to highlight and contrast it with say resistors. So, let us say I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor and I apply 1 volt, what will be the current flowing? Huh? 1 million. Now, let us say I take the same 1 kilo ohm resistor and apply sorry not a voltage source, but a 1 milliamp current source. What will be the voltage? 1 volt. Okay. So, let us say I take a control source maybe a voltage controlled current source. If this is V, this is 1 milli Siemens times V. Okay. Now, this is connected somewhere, maybe I just short it. So, if I apply 1 volt, what is the current I get? 1 milli ampere. Let us say if I do this, if I, apply, if I have 1 milliamp here, what will be the voltage? Hmm? What is that? You are nodding your head. Destroyed, ok. Actually, this is not defined. Of course, with ideal elements you can always come up with circuits that violate some uh, uh, fundamental law. The simplest example is to have I mean, nothing prevents me from drawing this circuit, but you know it is invalid because it disobeys Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. Now, in this case when I mean, you cannot do this because and expect anything meaningful ok, because this control source is what is known as unilateral uh, unilateral element ok. So, that means that you can apply this control voltage here and expect a current to come that is you apply 1 volt here and you expect a current to be forced in the control source but not the other way around you cannot apply a current on this side and expect a voltage here ok. Now, if you look at the basic passive elements R L and C they are bilateral ok showed here that is you apply voltage you will get a certain current you apply that current you will get that voltage ok, but control sources by definition are unilateral ok. So, this is extremely important now it looks like a trivial thing, but many times I mean there is a lot of confusion about this. 
the control always flows from in the way I have written it from left to right. Okay. So, you apply the controlling quantity and you get the controlled quantity in a voltage controlled voltage source you apply a voltage and you get the controlled voltage, but you cannot do the other way around you cannot apply something here and expect something to come back there. Now, this is important because like for instance there is a difference between doing algebraic calculations and how this works right. It is perfectly all right for me to give you this circuit and right, this is of course, an extremely simple circuit. So, let us say I give you a problem in the test or something. This is V x and I have 1 milliamp current here find V x. This is a perfectly legitimate problem to ask of course, you will find V x from i, but that does not mean that you can apply an i and get V x. Okay. So, doing calculations is different from the operation of the circuit. Okay. So, it is a unilateral element many times we will do this may be because of the way the circuit is perhaps we can immediately find the value of the current and back calculate the voltage from there, but that does not mean that we have applied that current and then the voltage appeared there. Okay. So, it is always that the voltage is applied here and because of that the current appears there. Okay. So, this relationship has to be very clear. So, this is the cause and this is the effect okay. you cannot reverse them. So, that is the nature of unilateral elements. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> so, with this, let us go to the problem at hand. that is let us take this problem that is I want a circuit this is known as a two port I do not want to go into the details of two port I think are you familiar with two port parameters. Yeah. So, there are ways of describing this, but in this case I will simply say that if I apply V i here. So, here I should get k times v i and the important thing is I do not want k to be very sensitive to semiconductor uh, element parameters that is we will use some control sources inside even if those control sources by themselves vary a little I do not want this k to vary. Okay. Now, how might we go about doing that? Yeah, how do you make that? See, that is what I have been saying that uh, so, so far control sources and transfer functions are something I mean you draw a box and you write a number in it and you have it there, but how do you make it? Okay. That does not tell you how to make I mean either h of s or uh, I mean let us forget uh, even let us say that everything is independent of s right I just want k how would you go about making that. So, of course, I could say that I mean I could draw this, but again like I have to relate this to the transistor okay, which like I said realizes a voltage controlled current source right. Let us take it like this it is not quite like that it is a three terminal element, but uh, let us not worry about that detail. So, let us say I have voltage controlled current sources somehow. Okay. So, first let us at least uh, tackle that problem that I have voltage controlled current sources from that I want to make this uh, realize this relationship output voltage equals k times V i. How do I do that? Yeah, but that is not an amplifier right I would not want to do that. Okay. So, here the idea is to get gain. So, I want to get k greater than 1. Yeah, 
current where is the same yeah okay so so i have a current here gm times v so what should i connect to a and b r this is what you want right so yeah obviously this is the first solution right if you have a voltage controlled current source and you want a voltage output how do you get a voltage from a current you pass it through a resistor okay so this is what you do and you apply vi here this is basically v so obviously you will get gm times we are at this point and across this you will get if r is 10 by gm you will get 10 times v a okay is this fine any issues with it in light of what i said earlier about control sources what's that yeah let's not worry about those fine points right now okay Does this even work as advertised? I mean, does this give a gain of ten? Always. Why not? Huh? What did I say earlier about semiconductor control sources? GM varies all over the place, right? Now R doesn't necessarily vary that much, and in any case, R doesn't vary in some relationship to GM. okay because gm is some element and r is some other element completely there is no relationship between the two so this really so if i call this rl as the load resistance what i get is not 10 vi gm times rl times vi now it could be like he suggested i will take the nominal value of gm times the nominal value of rl to be 10 in that case it will work but as you change the temperature gm will change by a lot and the gain will change from 10 okay so that's what i wouldn't like to have and also let's say i take like 100 different transistors and make this then i mean they all will have slightly different gms or maybe sometimes substantially different gms and again the gain will be quite different from 10 okay now you know that electronics is mass manufactured right you produce a large number of amplifiers they should all behave in the same way i mean you can't sell an amplifier of gain 10 and i will turn out that one of them has 12 one of them has 15 the other one has 10 and also it changes if you take it from chennai to somewhere else kashmir i mean the gain changes a lot because of the temperature and so on okay so we have to we are stuck with these uh, voltage controlled current sources whose proportionality constant varies a lot but we still need to uh, realize a realize an amplifier whose proportionality constant doesn't vary okay so how might we go about doing that that's the question yeah hmm yeah so you're saying uh, <coughs> like this is it what you are suggesting or and then r here so how does this work i mean how does this solve the problem yeah actually first of all this current will be 10 times gm times v right so the gain is basically 10 times gm times r but gm still varies with temperature so this will not help So if you are driving, how do you drive at a given speed? Let's say you are required to drive at 50 kilometers an hour. How would you do this? Hmm? Yeah. So would you do this by let's say closing your eyes and then holding the accelerator at a fixed position because maybe sometime while you are driving, if I held the accelerator like this, it was going at 50. So is that what you would do? 
So, that is clearly something like this right. So, depending on which scooter or motorcycle you ride I mean for the same position of the accelerator it could and of course, the road itself I mean let us even not consider the variations of the road let us say you are driving on a nice airport runway it is very flat very nice and so on. Even then you take like many different scooters and then uh, hold the accelerator at the same position it will go at all, all sorts of speeds right there is no um, I mean it can vary very widely right there will be a lot of slack and uh, engine characteristics are different who knows what. So, how do you actually do it? Huh? So, you look at the speedometer. So, what you are controlling is what is the reading on the speedometer. So, first let us assume that the speedometer gives you a true measure of the speed that part has to be accurate otherwise we are finished anyway. So, you need to know what speed you are going at then you will constantly make changes which is the key. So, that you reach the correct speed. Okay. So, if you are going too fast you will brake, if you are going too slow slowly you accelerate. So, this way it does not matter I mean as long as the vehicle is capable of going at 50 kilometers an hour you can get there right by this algorithm or by this process. You look at the speedometer and you go on doing this thing if it is too fast you slow down and if it is too slow you speed up and so on uh, finally, so that the needle is bang on top of 50. So, that will be at 50 kilometers an hour. So, what is this process feedback? that is you sense what the output is compare it to the desired value this is what you do right I mean you do not think of it that way, but uh, I mean sensing what the output is is basically you look at the speedometer comparing it is you are simply looking at whether it is above or below 50 and you make some control adjustments. The control adjustments are not precise you do not know exactly how much the speed will increase if you rotate the accelerator by like say 5 degrees, Okay, but you do know that if you open the throttle it will speed up and if you brake it will slow down and so on. Okay, You know the direction in which things will change. So, that is all you need to know you do not need to know exactly like how much to brake right you do not like hold the brake down like uh, 3 millimeters so that it comes down to 50. Okay. So, you know the direction in which uh, you have to move things and you have a measurement of the output which you compare with the desired output and this is how you can get precision Okay, and this process is known as negative feedback this is feedback what is negative about it what does ne what does negative feedback mean of course this is feedback because you are looking at something and controlling it so that is feedback what does negative feedback mean is there such a thing as positive feedback and opposite to the change so it is whatever changes you make is such that the error comes down to zero okay so, if the error is positive the change you, you make will be such that the error falls down if the error is negative error the change you make will be such that the error increases. Okay. So, the error should come down to 0 the error magnitude should fall that is negative feedback you control things in such a way to decrease the error that is negative feedback positive feedback is the opposite right now we do not have any use for it, but we will see it later. Okay. So, positive feedback is where you actually I mean if you are a power, like if you are more than 50 you actually increase the speed of course, it does not make any sense in this context, but there are other uses for it we will see later. Okay. Any questions? So, the way of getting precision out of imprecise components is in general negative feedback. Okay. So, uh, the one of the key things which we will uh, take for granted now is that we have an accurate measure of the output. Of course, I mean in our case we are not really changing domains that is in case of uh, vehicle uh, the speed of the vehicle is related to how many times the wheel is spinning and its size and so on and then the speedometer is some gadget connected to it which gives you the speed. Now, the speedometer can be miscalibrated etcetera in our case anyway we are looking at voltages and we can compare one voltage with the other. So, you can imagine a scenario with a very accurate speedometer we do not consider that type of errors okay? because if the speedometer shows you something wrong what you are really doing is uh, adjusting things until the speedometer shows you 50 whether the vehicle is actually going at 50 when it shows 50 is a different thing altogether let us not worry about that part let us assume that it is accurate. Okay? So, we sense things and then we control uh, we control the output. So, that is negative feedback okay? and for our precision amplifier as well like I said we have to make k times v i or 10 times v i regardless of how the semiconductor components inside behave right. It is equivalent of let us say maybe the engine being a little weaker or stronger and the accelerator sensitivity being a little high or low. Okay? Regardless of all of that we have to get 10 times v i.
So, we will elaborate on this in fact, this is an extremely important thing. So, but let us see let us just get started v naught equals k times v i and what did I say? We use negative feedback which means you sense the output compare it to the desired value. and you control the output in a direction that minimizes error. Okay. So, this is what we do. How might we go about doing this at least the first parts? <coughs> Let us imagine that what we have is a voltage control current source okay, with whatever g m value we want. Let us assume that we can make that. Okay. So, how do you sense the output and compare it to the desired value? What is the desired value? What is the desired value? 10 times V i k times V i. Okay. So, what should be compared to what? Hmm? So, in this expression which is the output this one the desired value is that. So, what should be compared to what? Huh? V naught and k V i, but if I already had k V i why am I building all this? You are saying you compare the actual output to k times V i, but if I already had k times V i with me why would I even build an amplifier right. Think about it we will continue tomorrow.